Now, when Europe looks at us, they see a trigger-happy, isolated empire, probably in decline. And when Europe looks at us, they, they look at us thoughtfully. Do you remember the day we called the world's attention to order as Colin Powell sat down in that grand hall in the United Nations and talked, sold the war to us? In the United Nations, there's a giant copy of this mural above everybody as a reminder of the reality of war. Our government thought the day before Colin Powell was to make this address, it would make more sense to cover that up with drapes so nobody would see it. I couldn't believe it when somebody told me that, and I Googled it, and it's no doubt, it was there, it was in the paper, but no Americans really noticed, Europeans noticed, but our government didn't want us to know what a war is so we could run into a war, and that scares Europe, that offends our friends on the other side of the Atlantic, that's a problem. They look at us, and they say, see a nation with 4% of this planet's people spending as much as everybody else put together on our military and they see an environment politically where you cannot get elected without promising more. They see a nation outvoted routinely in the United Nations, 140 to 4 on issues that matter of desperate importance to the poor and struggling world. Go to the UN website, you see it, it's always 140 to 4 on anything that matters to the poor people. Who stands with us? Israel, Marshall Islands, and Micronesia. There's our coalition of the compassionate, enlightened ones, I guess, you know? And you can write off the United Nations as a group of loonies, but there is something wrong when we're outvoted 140 to 4. It's just not a pretty picture. We've got to deal with the rest of the world. We've got military bases in 130 different countries on this planet. I've been around. I've seen it. I have seen it. I've seen embassies that are the biggest and most fortified and scary buildings in an entire country, and it's not unusual, it's routine. I've been to the embassy in Berlin. This is the old one. God help your business if the American embassy moves in on that street. The new embassy is so fortified they had to literally reroute traffic, and, and the entrance for the public is in a park. You go down in the park under the freeway, and then you enter into the, into the uh, embassy this way. But, you know, I do not buy this business of the innocent civilian. I think it's a myth. There are no innocent civilians. If you pay taxes, you are a combatant. I am a combatant. Every bullet that flies and every bomb that drops has my name on it. That's just an honest approach to things. And it could be a good bomb or a good bullet. Sometimes they're necessary. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they're not. But I have to take responsibility for it. It's me that's paying for it and you. When we torture somebody, I was in Europe when that broke. What's it like to be an American in Europe? And on every headline, on every Newsweek over there, you've got a full color picture of, of victims of our, our soldiers getting tortured. Maybe you can write it off, but I had to rip off. The, I, I, it was a very interesting emotional experience for me. I've never reacted this way before. I had to rip it off of the magazine, fold it up, put it in my shirt pocket, and wear it right here for the rest of my trip. It was a painful thing to acknowledge the reality that this is my country doing that. Because that's what the rest of the world sees when they look at us. And it's important that we grow beyond that. Now, am I saying that Europeans don't like us? No. You're going to see this all over Europe, all over the world. But it doesn't mean anti-you. The ideals of America are still inspiring people all over the world. It's just they don't understand our aggressive foreign policy, our militaristic foreign policy. Do you need to wear a Canadian flag in your travels? <laughs> no, absolutely not. If I was Canadian, I would. That's for sure. I'd buff it. I'd have lights around it. But if I'm an American traveling, <laughs> I'm an American traveling. And it's never been something I've needed to hide. It used to be a plus. Now it's not a plus, but it's not a negative. It's just me, all right? And I want to be, I am an ambassador of goodwill in my travels. When you travel, I think that you've got to understand that people in Europe like American individuals. I just took a thousand people to France. A lot of people are nervous about going to France. I asked all thousand of them on an email, how were you respected by the uh, local people? Nobody complained. They like us. Now, a lot of people say, don't they remember what we did against the Nazis? Of course they remember what we did against the Nazis. I was just filming in Burgundy in France in a charming little mom and pop chateau. And look, get out of my way when we're filming. The sun's going down, we got work to do. No. The aristocratic family that's been in that castle for generations said, we must stop and have a ceremony because we have an American film crew here working in our castle. And they brought out with some ceremony this beautiful 48-star American flag, the one they hoisted over their chateau on that great day in 1945 when they were freed by the American troops. 
man, they said, you go home and tell your friends that we will never forget what America did with its heroics and its might and its belief in freedom and all that kind of stuff. Europe is always thankful for that. What about the communists? Yes, we beat the Soviet Union and Europe understands that. There's no doubt about it. But I lament the fact that they no longer name their children Frankie and Johnny. Because I've got a lot of friends, a few years older than me, born in the late 1940s, named Frankie and Johnny. Because their parents were so inspired by the greatness of America. The reality today is if you're in marketing in Europe, one of your responsibilities is to comb anything that smells like America out of your marketing material. Because California used to sell, today it's the kiss of death in Europe. I was just in Washington, D.C., you know, lobbying and doing all this kind of stuff. And, and it, these legislators are really concerned about the brand of America.